goes one, two, 2021. Six a.m. We just took Dino down. We are filling up the water tank, so we have a full tank before we leave the Alderbrook, and then we will head back down the Hood Canal. We've got fifty-five miles, and today we're just going to go to Fort Flagler, near Port Townsend, before crossing the Strait tomorrow to go back to the San Juan Islands for a few days to celebrate New Year's. So, because it's you know fifty-five miles, it's a decent trek, short for us, but decent and since the days are so short with light we figured we'll just split it into two before crossing the strait because we don't want to be crossing the strait at night if we don't have to and we don't have to be in a rush so when you're not in a rush you take it slow so that's what we'll do today um, hopefully within 20 minutes we'll be on the road and we can say farewell to one of our favorite spots do we always run the wing when we pull off the dock no we probably should but usually when the weather's um a little iffy if the wind's blowing then we'll have it on as a backup here we're not on a slip we're on a face dock and we're getting blown onto the dock so i'm going to use it like a twin engine boat and i'm going to put the wing in forward and the main uh astern and try to get the stern to pivot away from the dock and then counteract it with the thruster to get the bow off the dock and i'm hoping that that'll uh, keep us off the dock mm. rougher exit <laughs> getting pushed towards the dock all right bye Elderbrook maybe we'll see you next Christmas as we got underway towards our anchorage for the night the fog started to lift so we could enjoy some beautiful winter views along the hood canal and delicious blueberry muffins right out of the oven. And although the seeds weren't as flat as our arrival day, we did get another two knot boost in speed because we planned the current just right. We also got a visit from the Coast Guard alerting us that military assets would soon be in the area. Our guests were submarines, but sadly we didn't see anything as we cruised out of the canal towards Fort Flagler. In true Pacific Northwest fashion, the day only kept getting better. So once we were out of the canal and into Puget Sound, we decided to make a slight change of plans to take advantage of the favorable seas. So I think we're gonna reroute here to the San Juans. All today? Yeah, we can get there about 45 minutes after sunset or an hour after sunset. So not ideal but I think there's a little bit of upside to our speed based on the timing so maybe it'll only be a half hour after sunset and the winds are supposed to be real nice uh, right now yeah too nice so maybe we'll uh, take advantage of the situation cool where do you think uh, where are you thinking we go uh, we'll go to Griffin Bay which is I gotta clean up my route a little bit but it's right here on the south end of San Juan Island. It's supposed to blow pretty good out of the south tonight. So this, if we tuck in here, I think we'll get pretty good protection. So 
right now it's showing we'll get there at 518 if we can maintain this speed. We're going pretty good, 7.8. Yeah. I don't think we'll do quite that good. We'll probably do seven and a half though. Not bad. Yeah. Like they say, plans in boating are written in sand at low tide. So Meaning they're always getting washed away. Yeah. <laughs> When you have a long time to think about things underway, you know, start contemplating all of your decisions. Yeah. Yeah, the Strait of Juan de Fuca can pick up and get pretty gnarly. And this, the weather window or the wind forecast for the next several days is kind of all over the place. It's not horrible, but it's, it's not like it is right now. So we'll take advantage of basically no wind and flat seas, as Jim and Rosie say. Eight point eight knots. We were at two thousand RPM or eighteen hundred. Yeah, nineteen fifty or something. Is this okay to be traveling that fast? I'm supposed to do it every every day for if you're running for a long period of time, like eight hours, you should run it for thirty minutes at wide open. At twenty three hundred RPM. Mm -hmm. Blow the carbon out of the engine. Nine six nine six. Can I get a nine seven? Nine seven. Oh, Whoa! Come on. Yatsi! <laughs> Woo! Come on! Oh no! We're not gonna lie. It's pretty darn exciting to pick up some speed when you're nearly eight hours underway. This lightning fast ten knots came even after we backed down to eighteen hundred RPM, proving just how beneficial it is to know the tide schedule and plan accordingly. And while the majority of the crossing was uneventful, we hit some crazy current as we approached San Juan Island. Not having the luxury of speed to power through it made it a bit stressful, but we eventually made it through the rough patch and into our anchorage for the night, just in time for the wind to pick up. It's 7.10 in the morning, and it's pitch black. But it's not too cold, and the wind died down. Thank God, last night in bed, we needed seat belts. It was crazy. So about last night, we made it into Griffin Bay at the southeast end of San Juan Island. The bad news is there were crab pots everywhere. The good news is we started to really love our new spotlight since it saved our butts navigating around the crab pots. Lots of crab pots. Then shortly after we got settled in, the wind started gusting over 20 knots from the south, shifting east southeast, which wasn't exactly in the forecast. As you can see, this bay isn't the most protected bay. So when the wind shifted, we were in for a wild ride. The high wind alarm even went off four times with Sean sleeping through all four alarms. Although we have a ton of confidence in our anchor, it's still hard to fall asleep without having nightmares that you're drifting onto shore, crashing into other boats, or getting taken out to sea. So I basically didn't sleep at all. And now we are ready to pull up anchor and head to Jones Island. We've never been there. Uh, we just read a little bit about it this morning and we're excited to hopefully go and not have it be raining. I think it's supposed to be somewhat dry for the rest of the day. So we can go and drop the dinghy and go take a hike and maybe take the dinghy a little farther. We're not sure. We might take the dinghy to go get pizza, but we'll see. All set? Uh-huh. Firing her up. 
Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. How loud am I? Real loud. I'm sure the hostess can hear you just fine. It's late enough. Do you think they're awake? Uh, if they weren't, they are now. <laughs> Is my butt crack showing like usual? Oh, butt crack is showing? That's good. Do you ever think you'll put on socks or shoes? Uh, I think that one day it's the same when they like ice up. In the Pacific Northwest, the days only get better, typically. The winter, all bets are off with that, so who knows. But maybe by 3 o'clock it'll be nice and we can get off the boat. Despite the cruddy weather, our short five mile cruise to Jones Island had some nice eye candy along the way. When we arrived at the North Bay on Jones Island, the one that would be most protected from the wind forecast, it looked a little too tight for our liking. So we decided on plan B. So that anchorage is probably a little too tight for another boat. It's deep, which means you have to put out a fair amount of road and I think it's too tight for another boat to anchor in there. If they weren't in there, we could anchor in there. Uh, the dock's missing, so it'd be difficult to go to shore. So maybe we save Jones for a time during the summer. Um, and we could always dinghy over here from a different anchorage if we wanted to do the hike. That's exactly what we did. We saved the spot for another day. And in our attempt to try something new, we decided to head east to Cypress Island. It's supposed to be pretty fantastic, and it's close to Anacortes, in case we need to hide out from the bad weather coming our way in a few days. Eagle Harbor on Cypress Island is a beautiful spot. Unexpected. As always, I thought this would be a much larger harbor or much larger bay. It's pretty small, but just beautiful. You definitely don't even, I don't feel like I'm in the San Juans. It's got a very different look and feel and vibe to it. I feel more like I'm in British Columbia. So now I'm, I, I'm exhausted. Between not getting sleep last night, another longer ride. It's been, how long have we been on the road? I don't even know. Seven hours, six, six hours maybe to get here or five, five and a half. I don't know, didn't really track when we left. But it's day two of not expecting to be underway as long as we were and I just feel tired. Just wanna take a nap and then hopefully tomorrow the weather is supposed to be good, so hopefully tomorrow we can get off the boat finally and hike around and check out Cyprus. I'm just feeling the itch right now to just be off the boat. It's all mental. When you don't think you're gonna be cruising all day and then you do it and you do it two days in a row, it's just your mind that's like, ah, get me to land. And then the rain, the rain doesn't help. It's been pretty poopy, but it could be worse. Could be snowing. The next morning we woke up to an epic sunrise, which got us both super energized for the day. First on the to-do list was taking down the Christmas lights, all of them. then the Christmas decorations, and finally the Christmas tree until next year. This is always a sad day, but once it's over, it feels good, like we're one step closer to summer. Next, I launched the dinghy so we could get to shore, stretch the legs, and explore a bit of Cypress Island.
can't believe how nice it is today. It's yeah. it is warm. Pretty yeah. yeah. It's so nice right now. It's probably 50 degrees, maybe even a little warmer. Got my hat and gloves just in case. You never know weather these days. Just a beautiful day. Well, hold on, buddy. Uh oh. We're not supposed to be anchored. No? No. Uh oh. No wonder there were so many mooring balls. So last night when we were pulling in to anchor, I was like, how in the world are there so many mooring balls? There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably 15 or 16, if not more, further back. And that's why they want you to just use them free of charge. So good to know for next time. We don't like mooring balls, but you know, if we ever had to go farther in, it's good to know. But hopefully by, by being out in 80 feet of water, we are okay. I don't think that's an eelgrass zone there. No? I don't know. I could be wrong, but we're out of ways. Hmm. Hmm. You learn something new all the time. Don't know what eelgrass is? Well, they're sea plants that live in shallow coastal waters and are very important for the environment. I'll let you Google them, but basically, don't anchor where the mooring balls are. Okay, back to the hike. Cypress Island is quite a beautiful island, and actually not a part of the San Juan Islands as we found out. It's the westernmost part of Skagit County, just east of the San Juans. At 5,500 acres and over 1,500 feet tall, the island overlooks Bellingham Channel to the east and Rosario Strait to the west. The island also has several lakes, we made it to Reed Lake today, which is more like a pond, but since the map says lake, we'll just go with that. The trail also goes for miles, with many critter sightings along the way. After walking for what felt like forever, we finally made it back to the dinghy after three hours to kick off the new year with a splash. A very cold splash. Okay, here goes. We did this once in Milwaukee, the polar plunge, every year on January 1st to rake the new year. I don't remember how cold that water was, but you'd have to walk over these sheets of ice, barefoot, jump in, jump out, try to feel your limbs. And now, this is so much easier. We've got a warm boat to come to, we've got a warm shower, hopefully the hot water heater doesn't give out on us. And we'll uh, say bye Felicia to 2020 and hello 2021. I think they say if you swim in 45 degree water for 30 minutes, you could die. So hopefully by going in for about 10 seconds, we won't die because that would be a real <laughs> way to ring in the new year. That'll be the exception. <laughs> yeah, Sean, don't you go dying on me. Uh, ladder down. Okay, me first, since this is my idea. Oh, yeah. Woo! Here it goes. One, two, 2021! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> One more for good luck. <laughs> Don't die! Well, there you have it. 2020 is a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss what's coming up in 2021. We'll see you next time. Ah, oh, bring on the new year and a hot shower. That second one was bad. Yeah. I mean, if you like, your heart like stops. Hey guys, it's time for everybody's favorite YouTube segment. It's Q&A with the captain aboard MV Freedom. Let's go ahead and get started with our questions. First question this week comes from Robert Cobb. Robert lives in Mansfield, Texas. When you start going on longer passages, do you have any plans to cruise through uh, Panama and then up to the east coast of the US? Uh, absolutely, that's actually most likely the plan that we're gonna take. First, we wanna take a stop up to Alaska, explore that area, and then we'll work our way down the west coast of the US and Mexico work our way to the Panama Canal, and then head over to the east coast of the U.S. Next question this week comes from Jill and Walt. Jill and Walt live in Woodbridge, Virginia. How many hours do you have on the engines and generator, and what were the hours when you first purchased the boat? Uh, when we first purchased the boat, we had about 4,100 hours on the main engine, and we had about 1,800 hours on our generator. And currently today, we have uh, 5,200 uh, hours on the main engine, and we have 2,400 hours on the generator. Our third question this week comes from Glenn Peacock. What is the reason you chose Seattle as your port? I would think places like Bellingham would be cheaper mortgage fees, easier to get around town, and closer to outdoor activities. So uh, the reason we settled in on living close to the city is when we first moved here, Elizabeth was working downtown, and I obviously travel a lot for work, so being close to the airport is key. Also, it's somewhat driven on where we can find moorage. Uh, there's a lot of wait lists in the area, uh, depending on where you want to moor, and we are on some uh, live aboard wait lists in some different areas, but uh, some of those lists can be quite long. So for now, uh, we'll stay near the Seattle area. Our next question this week comes from Jason, and Jason lives in Seattle, Washington. About anchoring, when you're at a spot for a day or two, how do you deal with an anchor that has dug in really good and difficult to pull in or retrieve? Uh, thankfully, we haven't had any issues. Our windlass has been able to retrieve our anchor. However, if our anchor was uh, dug in really good, a few different methods that we can do is obviously pull in uh, all of our scope until we are kind of have a vertical line directly over the anchor, and then we can try nudging forward to rock it out of uh, the seafloor bottom. If we can't get it up though, doing that method, uh, we would probably likely have to dive down and see what the anchor is followed on. Alternatively, you could put a trip line on. A trip line is a line attached to the front of the anchor, and you can use that for kind of pulling the anchor from, from the front end back out. Um, so that's a good way to retrieve a followed anchor as well. So again, fortunately we haven't had that issue, and if we did, we would likely would dive down and see if we could work the anchor out or put a trip line on and use that to get the anchor out. And our last two questions are very similar, so I'm going to answer them together. They were submitted by Gwen from Portland, Oregon, and Brad Elliott from Vancouver, uh, BC. And it's in regards to how we keep the temperature inside of our boat. Uh, do we use diesel heat um, or do we run the generator for heat? And if so, how often? So we do not have diesel heat aboard MV Freedom. We have electric uh, heat. So when we're at our slip, it's obviously not a problem. We're tied into shore power. However, when we are anchored out, we do need to run our generator a fair amount. We don't run it overnight while we're sleeping. So we'll usually run it in the morning to heat the boat up. If the sun's out, the boat kind of retains its heat during the day. So we can usually uh, turn it off for a period of time during the day. And then uh, in the evening, we run it again until it's time to go to bed. So that's how we are able to run our electric heat while at anchor. As always, really great questions. If you want one of your questions answered, follow us on Instagram and drop us a direct message with your name, your location, and your question, and we'll try our best to get it answered in an upcoming video. Hope everybody has an outstanding week, and we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, guys.